me so fuck it I'm gonna be me anyway it's a wonderful Easter Sunday I guess uh, one of the I guess this will be um, one of the first year well not the first year but the last several years you know we haven't had a big Easter dinner uh, I used to get together with my father my mother would force him to take us all to this fancy restaurant around town whatever was you know pretty nice I mean it wasn't super fancy, but it was nice, and we don't do that anymore, I don't have anybody to spend Easter dinner with, one of the few things in my family I like, you know, is Easter dinner, not because of my family, but I just like to have a nice dinner and get together, you know, just something not real formal, but more formal than a fast food place, you know, where you can sort of go to a nice place, and we've gone to a few nice ones, uh, the one that comes to mind most is uh, the old Berkeley down in Chaco Bottom, a few steps away from my old drinking hole, the bus stop. Uh, well, not nice Chaco Bottom, but Chaco Slip. Uh, what was so funny about that year, it was about 15 years ago, I can't believe it's been that long, 13, something like that. Uh, uh, my mother makes these arrangements to go there. It was a very nice restaurant, by the way. Enjoyed my meal there. I mean, service was really good. You know, not overpriced. I mean, it was not cheap, but it wasn't ridiculously priced. Food was very good and presented very well. But anyway, the funny thing about it was we went there, you know, and I had no idea that this was during a very bad time of my life that I was recovering from. Uh, Put it that way. Who do I run into? A girl that I loved from uh, college. Uh, she was a gay girl, so we couldn't, you know, exactly have a thing. But I still loved her to death. She 
Louisiana twin sister. They were from Louisiana. Her name is Susanna. She, uh, uh, her name means white lily. Her sister's name is Lyra. It means uh, uh, nymph. So I always uh, looked that up one time and I was laughing because I was saying their mother must have been a poetic woman. <laughs> and then later I ran into a bitch where she died and, and she was more than that. So I had made all the sense that I was right on the money. Susanna had mentioned she was kind of crazy, she told me once. And, you know, they had drinking for issues in the family. Uh, Susanna was trying to get over her problem at the time. And I was sort of lost in the middle of my own problem with that. So it was weird. And, but, you know, I got carried away the first girl I ever met. But I really felt a connection to her. And this was college, you know. And I just loved her to death. And we sort of, something, you know, I do something stupid. And I don't want to get into it. Broke it all up. We never smoked again. We never really were friends. I mean, we didn't hate each other. It wasn't nasty. But it's like we never did recover from it. And I miss her ever since. Still miss her to this very day. And Easter, I remember. Because when we were at that restaurant, the bird place, <laughs> that I had no idea. She probably thought that I did this on purpose, and I really didn't. I had no idea. I walk in there, and Susanna's working there. She worked in the hospitality industry, so does her sister. So it wasn't unusual that she would be there. She worked high in places most of the time, and so did her sister. And uh, so she was there, but not only was she there, but she was assigned to wait on our table. Nobody at the table knew who she she was or how I felt about her. Nobody knew anything to my knowledge anyway. And there comes Susanna to wait on us. She just got so fl uh, uh, flustered she just couldn't do it. And, and I'm looking at her and she's looking at me. I'm speechless. I had not seen her in like 10 or 15 years. And you know, I'd been sending little trinkets to her and her sister all these years just to sort of, you know, do something nice, keep in touch. But I I never heard from her. and there she is right in front of me and she just couldn't take it and I know she thought I did it on purpose I felt so bad I would have got up and left I would have not even gone if I'd known because I wouldn't want her to feel that way especially would not want to dump my family on her like that especially my family of all families and so she's standing there and she had to go get somebody and talk to the man and get somebody else to wait on her table and uh, so uh, she's doing that and somebody else waits on us I felt so bad because I really did like seeing her I wish we could have talked I wish my family was sane and normal enough that you, know, you could introduce them but you know, no you couldn't do that with anybody but uh, anyway if you were if you had any sense anyway so uh, anyway to make a long story short um Susanna, just, she went about her work. She, she didn't go run off and hide, but she just went on and waited on other people. She seemed happy, more relaxed. But my father sat there, and I caught him. He kept smiling at her every time she was walking around. And I was like, he probably doesn't know her. She is. And she doesn't know that he doesn't know her. I'm sitting there laughing. I'm like, boy, you know, maybe we got something in common. And me and my father, uh, he's got good dates. She really was a beautiful soul. Uh, I miss her to death. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what to say. I wish I could see her again. I wish we could talk again. We used to talk all the time over coffee. And, you know, we just had some connection. We'd run into each other all the time, almost like it was meant to be. And, you know, and then it got fucked up like it did. And it was a sad sort of ending that way. But I I'll never forget her. She, you know, Easter will always remind me of her all times of year. Thanksgiving, too. You know, one time she told me uh, that Thanksgiving, after Thanksgiving in college, oh, I started to call you. I'm like, thinking about so why didn't you do it that way? <laughs> she was lonely. I'm boy, I was. My family, you know, you know, you liked the dinner, but you didn't like the people. <laughs> you know, I would have loved to spend the Thanksgiving with her instead of my family. Family. And she didn't have any family here but her sister at the time. So, anyway, I don't know what to 
those two girls think that I started flirting with her sister laughing. So that's a joke, cause yeah, pretty well, Suzette is gay, so I can flirt with her sister, maybe she's not. That's what, I don't know, she may hate me for that. Suzette might be offended by it, but I just did it as a joke. I would send them little C CDs, now I send them DVDs with music videos on them, just so I guess to keep in touch. She did it once or twice a year since 1995, I think. Last time I ever saw her, really. Or, you know, talked to her in, in depth. I mean, I'd run across her once or twice in between, but not much. And then 2007, it was uh, 15 years ago, so I ran into her, and uh, there she was. She looked good, a lot older. <laughs> uh, I can't believe she's my age, a little bit older than me. She's like a year or two older. I'm 53, so she's a... Uh, probably about 54 or 5, so it's hard to believe, but she's still looking good, I did look her up on Facebook, I'm just a little older, but she still looks good, still has that, that thing, you know, they had this smile that was so subtle and inviting, and you know, Susanna, she was such a subtle person, you could know what she was thinking, but she, you know, you never know what she knew, and she just cracked that smile, and she was happy, that subtle Louise had a smile, so I sort of, I, I got it kicked out of it. I wish we could have got to know each other. You know, I got some. I wish I could have showed her my girl some. She never saw that at the time. Shout out to Jimmy, it was there. It was there, but I didn't sit there with anybody, not even her. And I trusted her, you know. But, um, that's what I'm thinking about to see if she's the same as Susanna, really. I wish I could have a dinner with her. Just talking with us at the Berkeley. Berkeley's a nice little place for a special dinner. If I had a woman to take out a girl to take out to a nice dinner, that's a good place to go. If you got some money, I mean, it might be $100 or $200 for two people, but it's well worth it. Uh, it's a nice, intimate setting. It's not too big. It's not too fancy, but it's fancy. You know, you don't go in there in rags and a t-shirt, but you don't have to go in there in a, you know, in a uh, Brio no mop suit either, you know, just look nice and enjoy the evening, or afternoon it was when we were there, but um, I haven't been doing a lot lately, trying to get focused on music, I got um, trying to get back in the groove, keep running any glitches with my software. They did an update, fucked everything up, I had to downgrade to another version, and that fucked up. And I think I finally got it straight. Uh, I changed computers a couple of times. I got a tiny one I liked, but it was a little too slow, so I'm sending that back. Going back to the old one I used, which is a nice computer. It needs a new board in it, because the one is in it's cheap. But I can get one for about 70 bucks. Still keep it, it's a good system. Uh, 8400 i5, 6 core, it runs pretty damn good. It runs as good as my AMD uh, Ryzen 7. So, uh, I mean, I don't know why I went through the Ryzen 7. That i5 is pretty damn good. But, uh, you know, I'd like to go to the i7, uh, uh, 11th generation or 12th generation. But I don't really need to. But if I, you know, if I want, I can put a board in there. It's uh, 10th generation. Generation and 11th generation compatible, and uh, 10th generation out of fives are fairly cheap. $200, you can get a good one. They're very close to an i7, and I just use this computer for the music stuff, so I don't really worry about the video end of it. So uh, I might do that at some point, but all this technology is just driving me crazy. So um, that's what I've been doing, trying to get that music ready. I'm starting to release uh, three song sets now. Try to spend more time on them instead of those rushed posts that I've done in the past where I just sort of rushed it out of the box. I want to try to do it more uh, cleaner and tighter than I have in the past and play better too. You know, my voice has been all over the place and still is giving me trouble. Um, but I'm, you know, I got to get back and practice and it's better to do work on, focus on three songs at a time. Do it once, twice a week, keeps you in good practice at least for me, and, you 
know, as long as the software cooperates, I can get some good material. And so I'm working on that, working on some things, trying to make some money. I tell you, it's just so hard to make money. These prices today are just out, out of the roof. And this inflation is all fake. There's no reason this stuff should be so fucking high. Um, you know, I, I think about it every time I go in the store, stuff is like three and four times what it was just a year or two ago. I remember a year, uh, just about four or five years ago, you could get by on, um, you know, $20 a day fairly well, bare bones, daily expenses like coffee or a pack of cigarettes. Now you need 30 or $40 for that. And don't you know, the gas, uh, you know, that's just absurd. And I mean, everything, groceries are getting so fucking high. I just spent uh, nearly $200 yesterday and got hardly, a, hardly anything. I mean, this stuff will run out in a week and a half, two weeks. And, you know, you just can't win. And it's like, you know, you try to make money, people don't want to pay you, or you got so much competition. So I'm trying to find a niche of, in some, a couple of different things to, to make some money and get out of this hole I've been in. I um, just can't seem to do it yet. And then I have my house to deal with. I got to get that certain parts of it definitely need to be fixed as, as soon as I can. Can't get any help to do it. Can't even get anybody to offer any, you know, labor help, much less part of your materials. You know, they talk all this talk about help this, help that. They don't do at least quite a lot of talk, no action. And I'm tired of that crap too, you know. I'm tired of people just running me in circles. You got the county trying to move me out. Oh, we can find your house in here. I am mean, like I'm supposed to give up what little I own, a little piece of property I own. So they can go jerk off and have a good time and make money for somebody else and put me in some fucking home. Not gonna happen. I don't know why they always try that shit. They tried it with my mother. She almost fell for it. I had to stop that with the state legislator. And, um, you know, it's just like, now I can stop with those people. And I'm getting real tired of that. So, you know, I'm at war with the county and Enrico. I'm not putting up with any more of their crap. Uh, they, they're just utterly ridiculous. Now they want to put a big housing development up behind my property and that's another reason they want to harass me. Uh, they want to make it all pretty. Put in this, they're trying to put 19.8 units per acre behind this uh, neighborhood on this strip of land that's been in empty since God knows when. And it's just too much for that area. It, it, the infrastructure can't handle it. And it's just going to be overpriced junk and you're going to have assy, assy neighbors complaining and all kinds of trouble. And, you know, I can't sell my house because it needs work and I'm not selling it to a flipper for pennies on the dollar like the county thinks they're going to talk me into doing or force me into doing. And so they can put me in a home to help me. You know, you got to watch it when they say help because that means trouble most of the time it means you're going to get fucked. And I'm not going to get fucked, but uh, I don't want to get in all that political stuff. But that's going on. <laughs> trying to find what's going on. Trying to get back into my creative stuff, doing these videos, doing music and stuff. And of course, trying to find a few friends. I can't seem to find that either. <laughs> Fuck that up all the time. There's the Caitlyn deal. She just, I don't know what's wrong with her. She just suddenly decided she didn't like me. So I don't know. I, I tried to talk to her the other day. <laughs> you know, I hadn't talked to her in a while. I left her alone like she asked. And uh, she, she did talk for a second, but she was all detached. She runs and hides from me like I'm going to do something to her. But maybe it's just because she really doesn't like me, but I just, something tells me that's not it with her. Just knowing the little details about her, I know. I mean, I just liked her. I know she's young, too young to be like having this big fleeting romance with, but you know, you could be friends, you could make your arrangement, you know, you know, your exit strategy when she gets older and you get older. I mean, it's one of those things. There's no reason that like, age come into play all the time. You know, she was lonely, so she said she worked herself to death. She told me this herself. And I can't 
can tell she's not happy. So now you can tell she wants a friend. Just like I do. That's why I took a chance and uh, started talking to her. My gut was telling me to run for cover. No more checkout chicks. No more young girls. But she was sweet. She was tied up in her arms. She's a good girl in a way, but she's haunted by the past. Uh, you know, she has a troubled past. She has a kid. Obviously, somebody sucked her over and left her with an empty bag. She thinks every guy's gonna do that. Yeah, of course, this girl ain't messing up. I caught her one time looking downstairs. It was so damn funny. I went to bus to go laughing. I think I heard these ladies. To, she's looking down there, real, trying to look like unnoticed. And I noticed. I started to say, so I said, no, nah, I won't say it. I won't embarrass her. I was so funny, though. Uh, what she didn't know is that's not real. <laughs> I don't you know, she's so green behind the ears about certain things because she is young. I don't think she can, uh, I think she wants to say that's real. <laughs> That's so funny, because it's not. I don't have money to have that kind. I might have it done if I had money, but in my age, I love what would I benefit, really. Uh, it's going on with this wild, wild girl, you know. She had bad experience. Somebody fucked her over. Fucked her over bad. I didn't realize that she was kind of real hard to get her life straight. And I know that, but, you know, she's kind of like, I'm going to be like that guy who you know, the hell was. You know, and I'm not. Just wanted a friend. That's it. I would make up for my mistakes if I knew what they were. She wouldn't even tell me what I did wrong. So how the hell can I read her mind? So, you know, that's how it goes. It's sad because I like her, but we probably wouldn't have clicked, you know. I'm an intellectual, sort of artsy kind of guy. I have to be cynical. I think she's a kind of into rollback boys with goatees and, you know, the quick and easy spring her lifestyle. You know, her dream was probably, and now I can't speak for her, but her dream was probably growing up with a big old fat guy with a paycheck, a plumber with an Econo line, retired in a shotgun house shack somewhere. Her, uh, him, his fat ass sitting on the porch, eating fat bag while she's twiddling biscuits. <laughs> Got four or five buzz cut fat kids. Uh, one, a couple of bitches that might be in jail or might be dead these days with the dope and the mask you want around. Maybe that's the lifestyle she's aiming for. I don't know. I hope not. Kimbo, you know, Kim was the other girl I said farewell to. Help the Chihuahua. She was a good girl, too. And I fucked that up, too. We both fucked it up, too. But with her, she was kind of artsy and intellectual. She did listen. She did speak about how she felt. It might have took a while. But, you know, she did. She did it up. Well, you know, Kayla just stopped making an effort. She did for a while. When she stopped, I don't know why. So I don't, you know, I don't want to talk trash on her or be bad. But it just was very disappointing because she gave me a glimmer of hope I hadn't had in five years since I lost this other person that I mentioned. And, uh, you know, I hope that I could give her something of myself, that we could grow something together for some space of time and be better for her. But I guess not. And, well, is that a girl? Is that a wild girl? I don't know what she was. I liked her for long, long ago, too. Uh, but I, we, we talked a few times, but just, you know, one of the things. You talked, but she didn't really go too far with it. Uh, she, did, she didn't have a problem with that little skirt thing, so I kind of took a liking to her for that, too. But uh, uh, then something happened to her. She Somebody fucked her over. She completely change, Brittany, her name is, uh, I have a bad nickname for her that came up before all this shit happened, <laughs> she killed me for us, that's my update for now.